Well, I'm delighted to say we're joined by Brown Ferguson, the Assistant Regional Performance Manager at Sports Scotland. Uh, Brown, thanks for joining us. I picked up on your Twitter feed um, with the alarming news that maybe the Scottish players that are represented in the top flight in Scottish football is diminishing. Um, what's, what's the main fear that you have from the research that you've conducted over a period of time? I think the main concern for myself is just the, the numbers that are dropping uh, year on year within the Scottish game. Certainly the number of Scottish players that are starting games in the top flight is getting less. Um, the number of Scottish players that have been recruited in the top flight and in the championship as well is getting less. Um, and it's been an ongoing trend for a number of years. My, my worry is when does it stop and at what point does it stop? Um, because ultimately it will have an impact on, on Scottish players. I know Sports Scotland is keen throughout all the sports to try and get as many people active in the game as possible. And when you look at the top flight, there has to be a pathway to it. Um, the problem might be, though, that you have a, a situation where clubs are becoming more and more financially cash strapped and looking for cheap labour. That will always be an issue. The, the clubs will always have to try and balance their, the finances that they have and try and recruit as best as they possibly can. Um, and as a manager or anybody sort of recruiting, you're going to try and get the best players that you possibly can to, to get the best team on the pitch. My concern is that just there's a lot of non-Scottish players coming into a, a game. Um, some, of course, have had a really strong impact. Some possibly not so much, but it's what effect is that having on certainly our young and up and coming players in terms of transitioning from uh, their, their, their sort of youth teams or their loans to their first teams. And on the loan market as well, it's not just the players that have been signed, it's diminishing of the players that are starting, it's diminishing, but the number of loan players that are going out to senior leagues, uh, whether that be League Two, League One Championship, is getting lower and lower also. The figures that you've been putting out is something that is a concern that I've been looking at constantly and highlighting over a, a, a number of years because I'm not too happy with the current setup of 12 teams in the Scottish Premiership. It's a, it's a cutthroat league and a lot of managers will tell you, well, I'm not interested in whether they're all Scottish or not because I could lose my job if I don't keep them in the Premiership. Yeah, it's exactly that. It's the managers themselves, it's their job and their remit is to try and put the best team out in the pitch that they believe is the right team for that moment in time to win matches. Um, so that, that won't go away and it's partly why I feel as though this, this issue needs to be raised at a higher level and certainly look at a governance level to actually maybe look at some rules, regulations or indeed incentives for clubs to ensure that they are playing Scottish players and giving Scottish players that opportunity to do their best in, in, in Scottish football, which is only ultimately going to have an impact on the national team further down the line. Yeah, uh, I mean, I love to see good quality players coming through. Th there is one bonus. Our exports seem to be picking up. I can remember a time when only, you know, uh, Darren Fletcher was the only Scot actually playing in the top flight in England. There's no doubt about it. You know, Ferguson's moved from Aberdeen over to Italy. Aaron Hickey moved from Hearts over to Italy and he's came back into Premiership. And there's obviously young players that maybe haven't been established as first team players yet that are moving on to, to bigger leagues or big European leagues. I think we always want to try and do that. We want to expose our players to the best leagues possible and training day in, day out with the best players possible and also obviously competing against the best players possible. I don't think there's any doubt in that, but the, the, the argument for myself is if we can convert more players into those leagues, if we can, rather than putting two or three each year to an Italy or an England or whatever it may be, if we can make that six, seven, eight, then there's going to be more and more players that are operating that level to have an impact that ultimately on the national team further down the line and that can only be a good thing. I think that the league that highlights everything for me is probably Uruguay, uh, a nation of smaller than ourselves, three and a half million, which consistently have over 90% of the, the starting players are from Uruguay. And obviously uh, they seem to convert a number of players into the big European leagues and consistently get out or get into the World Cups and regularly get out of the, the, the group stages. There are two quick points that I want to put to you before we go. Uh, first of all, I looked at the uh, last um, batch of uh, fixtures in England. 55 English players started out of the 220 on show, which is 25%. Um, you know, it's a similar picture across some of the top leagues. They look to try and get 
uh, the best players that they possibly can, whether they're homegrown or not. Totally. I, I just don't think we should be comparing ourselves to an English league. You know, it's regarded as one of the best, if not the best leagues in the world, with the best players in the world, with the the most riches in the world. Um, so it's almost impossible to compare our top flight to an English top flight, in my opinion. Um, but you said there that 25% of the players are English, but those English players are playing day in, day out with the likes of Kevin De Bruyne, um, Mohamed Salah, these types of players. So they're operating on a regular basis with world, world-class players. And I think that goes back to my point, it would be ideal and it would be great if we could actually convert more players into these types of leagues so they're getting exposed to playing against um, genuinely the world-class players, which um, the more we can do of that, the better. But as a comparison, I think it's very difficult for us to compare ourselves to England because as leagues go, they're just so different. Final point on this, how, how do you resolve it? Where do you go to, first of all, highlight the concern and how do you change the mindset? Because if it's a situation where there's a regulation in place that says you have to play a certain amount of Scottish players in the top flight, you know, and I can see a number of the top clubs going, uh, you know, away in Guy's piece. Uh, we had three foreigners rule and Scottish clubs didn't do all that great in European football. I mean, that's one thing you get a you get a kickback from the top end clubs um, and then the bottom end clubs just say, no, we've got the fear factor. I think going back to your the initial point is how do you take this further? I think what I've done with this is just raised it as an issue. And I'm delighted to obviously be on this this program to, to speak about it and hopefully more people become aware of it. Um, I don't think anybody would disagree that this is an issue where year on year we're having less Scottish players starting football. Um, and I think most people I've spoken to agree that this trend needs to change in one, one way, shape or form. Clubs are always going to look um, after themselves, which is totally understandable. and. Um, I agree with that, but similarly from a governance and a league perspective, I think things need to be looked at to be done to try and reverse this trend. And if what I've done starts to create a bit of debate and discussion around about it, then I hope that um, that's a certain, start, certain starting point to start reviewing it all. Absolutely. We'll finish on a positive note, Brown. You know, I'd love to see more Scottish players. I know we've got um, SFA coaches who'll say, they're trying to get more and more of a pull to call on. Let's keep our fingers crossed that uh, there's more and more Aaron Hickeys out there. Uh, Billy Gilmore's all trying to break through and not getting cherry-picked down south too quickly. And maybe they can get that magical 100 to 150 games up here in Scotland. It would be great if we could see them playing regularly and more of them, I agree with you. Um, fingers crossed. Listen, uh, we'll come back to you, Brown, because obviously... As uh, this season progresses and then next season we'll start to look at it and keep a monitor on the graph uh, and, and see exactly where it's going and if it really becomes a, a major concern. But brilliant for joining us. Thanks very much for, for giving us your insight. No, thank you very much for having me. And have me. Thank you. Uncensored, unbiased, unmatched. The Football Show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel.